No, I said I wouldn't. Um, I told myself I wouldn't make another one of these till I stopped being so congested. Um, so I'm feeling better today. Um, been reading some papers about branched chain amino acids in cirrhosis. Uh, not enough to really make a good conclusion on it, but it looks pretty promising. It looks like it's something that actually seems to help. Um, jaundiced again. Uh, I don't think it's that bad, especially on my face, but I see it on my, on my arms and my body when I go outside. Uh, and it's in my eyes. A little bit. It's mostly on the corners, but it's there. Um, it's okay. It's not too bad. I'm not blood or yellow like I was before. I'm just sensitive to it. Um, I've been get, I, I, I don't know. I think having this cold just kind of like, uh, it, it, I think my liver's just like shooting. It's just really inflamed because I have a cold. You're not, you know, uh, and that, that makes sense because it's working really hard right now. Um, and so I have been basically just completely inactive all weekend. Um, I'm having a hard time sleeping for the congestion, although last night it was the first night I was able to sleep. I wasn't short of breath. So maybe the uh, inflammation is starting to go down some. Because I feel like what it was is my liver was so inflamed that my diaphragm was hitting it. And I mean, <laughs> so I couldn't breathe in, you know, in, a, in my sleep when you want to breathe deeper. And my liver would stop it. It would wake me up. Similar to apnea, I suppose. Only, you know, ap people with sleep apnea don't have swollen livers. I mean, I guess they can. Excuse me, sorry. Back itches. I guess they can have sleep apnea, but... I, I have a feeling tonight I'll sleep just fine. It's no, there's no more congestion in my chest, and I still I still have some in my head, but I've I've gotten better pretty quickly from this cold. But I've noticed that um, I'm getting little tiny other infections, um, little tiny things. Um, it's okay. I, I, I will continue to rest today. Um, probably just gonna read the rest of the night. Watch some TV later, maybe. I don't know. But, uh, for this has been just like the most mild of colds. Just absolutely no problem, but I feel like it has. It's it's uh, it's made my liver work so much harder that you know I'm, I'm jaundiced again. My urine is fairly dark. Um, um, I think if I had a blood test today, it would not look good. It'd probably my bilirubin probably would have gone up from the being in the sixes where it was, um, just because I've been ill, but. I've been reading that these things really do fluctuate, and you can't really um, take the results of one blood test to heart. I've been having, last time it was in this year, and now it's pain in this year. And sore throat. I think it's the throat just radiating into the ear. It was worse last night, and I've had like a massive headache. And one of the things about liver disease, you can't take anything. I mean, I guess you could take Tylenol, but I'd rather not. And that's, I guess that's my litany of complaining. I don't need to do this for 10 minutes. Um, but it's just adjusting to the new normal, which is liver disease. just refilled my pill thing. I have the pill box of an old woman. You know. Went from having no pills at all because I didn't have to take my Zoloft anymore. Or, you know, just whatever supplements I wanted to take to having to take pills three times a day. I just took my afternoon pills. Uh, Sunday... Uh, I've been doing well this weekend. Usually I skip at least one set of pills on the weekend, but not this weekend. I've taken them all. Uh, 
That's good. It's easier for me to be disciplined during the week because I wake up at a certain time and I go to lunch at a certain time and my roommate comes home at a certain time, so dinner's at a certain time. So on the weekends when we're just kind of like do whatever it, it's much you know and I sleep late it's very easy for me to miss a dose but, um, I talked to my mom um, Friday yeah we um I, I, uh, she wants to talk at least once a week and I'll, I think that's fair she's she's really uh, overwhelmed by my dad he hasn't gotten into the nursing home yet. She, keep, It was supposed to be the very next day, according to my brother, and it just kept getting pushed back. And she just tells me, like, just one technicality after another. And I think my brother came home yesterday, but they have another friend. Uh, my dad used to be in this fishing group, and he made some friends there. And one of the friends he made was a guy named Ron. And Ron had an adult son named Jason. And I, I don't know what the circumstances were, but he Ron was out fishing, and he died. His boat capsized, I think. And although Jason was already an adult, he sort of, like, uh, you know, he was already friends with my dad, and sort of, like, they sort of grew, grew closer because of that, you know. And I don't think Jason thinks of my dad as his dad, but he thinks of him sort of not unlike his dad. So he's coming over this week. My brother, I think, left yesterday and came home. And I think Jason will be over there uh, early week to midweek to help them out. He's going to be coming in to Arizona from Texas. So it's really kind of him, you know, uh, to, to give my dad that kindness. Um, and that will also help my mom relax. I keep telling her, you got to get that cortisol down because it's only gonna it's only gonna make it worse on you. As long as my brother's there, as long as Jason's there, you rest whenever you can. You don't worry about what's for dinner. You don't worry about laundry. You just you rest because when when she's alone with him, she does not get rest. He, my dad, uh, he'll wait till you start falling asleep and then he'll start complaining. He doesn't want her to fall asleep. You know, he's a big baby. He always has been. So, and then I don't know if my brother's going back this weekend, but he'll probably go back next weekend. He'll probably be taking significant chunks of time off to go up there. I I don't know if I will be able to go at any point. I can work from there because it's a private network. I can't work from like a hotel or a Starbucks, but I can work from somebody's house. I just have to let my job know, which I would, of course. Um, but the problem is I'm sick and there's a bunch of pets and it's a totally different environment and I have no medical care there. The closest medical care to where they live is Vegas and that's an hour and a half away. So if something happens to me out there. There is like a sort of, they, they have a lot of, I guess, nurse practitioners, which of course, great, um, but they are overtaxed because there's I guess that for whatever reason there's no doctors where they live so all these nurse practitioners are taking care of everybody um, they did not choose a very good place to move if I'm honest I think as elderly people who are leaving they, they moved I don't know five years ago now as elderly people who are leaving their home where their children live or near where their children live they should have at least I think they bought like the first house they saw they should at least have checked out the hospital situation I, I've i always said this was a really stupid idea for them and now it's even more stupid because they've got no help and no medical care wow that's a bad way to leave this um, maybe I'll come back later and be a little more upbeat or maybe I'll see you tomorrow either way uh, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you later